Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. And uh, we are celebrating 11 years of VoiceOver Body Shop. Now, we started as East West Audio Body Shop. But when I came out here to California, we changed it to VOBS. And uh, we can't believe we've been doing this for 11 years. But one of the reasons we've been able to do it for 11 years is because we talk tech. And you guys can't seem to get enough of this stuff. Because we keep giving us new stuff to talk about. And now we mm -hmm. have some great stuff. What do you got tonight for us, George? Well, first I want to give credit, because it's where it's due, the name change. VOBS uh, yes. came from comedian Chris Eward. Ah. Look him up. He does The Laugh Factory. He's in Canada. That was his That was his stroke. <laughs> Jeez, like <laughs> in the middle of the night, he emailed me. How about VOBS, Voice Over Body Shot? I was like, yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so he deserves credit for that. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about the new Mac that just came out. That uh, you know, our, our, we're a little out of sync on the news cycle with that. So by now, you guys have probably all heard about it. But my take on it: um, a new noise suppressor plug-in and some updates on gear that I've had to get warranty repaired or updated or whatever. So um, and, and a little tip for your business if you want to have a little bit more sophisticated phone system without oh. buying phones this is a, a way to do it you got a pile of them sitting behind the curtain over here of old landline phones and we're also going to talk about limiters and sort of about mm. compressors which is something that a lot of people ask about Don't all worry, this we won't limit the knowledge too much <laughs> where's where's my you know it's on here if i keep forgetting to hit the drum roll or the the rim shot anyway uh voiceover body shop tech talk you got a question throw it in now great time if you got a question about your home voiceover studio because it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk right now from the outer reaches they came bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio and together from the center of the vo universe they bring it to you now george widom the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO B. Yes. yes. Tech, talk. Tech, talk. Tech, tech, talk. Talk. tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. 11 years we've been doing this, Jorge. Um, and it's uh, unbelievable. It's been worth it. Been yeah. worth it. Oh, I, everybody <laughs> knows who we are, for crying out loud. It's, it's different. Um, you know, we, it, technology in voiceover is just really, really hard for a lot of people. And we, we were talking about this before the show, that you know, people go to coaches and they, they learn how to be a voice actor or something. Nobody teaches them how to do the recording stuff, despite the fact that that's how it is we can do what we can do from our home studios. Now more than ever. Exactly. There's more and more demands on you as voice actors to know the engineering side. That's right. But it's not really engineering. You know, it's... The important stuff is to know the basics. And if you yeah. can get away with the basics, uh, you know, that we talk about all the time about acoustics and mic technique 
and setting your levels properly, which, you know, we'll get into a little bit tonight. Uh, that's really the key to having your audio sound what it's supposed to sound like. Mm-hmm. Whistle. And, uh, and, and there's a way it's supposed to sound. And when George and I get stuff and we listen to your audio, what does it take? Five seconds. And we know what's going on in your studio. We know the acoustics in there. We know your mic technique. We know your levels because we look mm-hmm. at them and go, where's, where's my loop? I can take a look at the, um, <laughs> the yeah. waveforms in there. Um, and we're here to teach you about it. And we do it professionally. We give you lots of tips here on the show and, you know, and that, and that's important. We answer your questions, but if you're really trying to learn it from the ground up, or if you're an established professional, uh, and you're doing well and you say you have a technical crisis, something's (laughs) not working. Uh, or if you just want to learn a little bit more, you're looking at the two guys that can do this, you know, uh, we, we do it professionally. We're easy to get a hold of. Well, at least I'm easy to. You know, you're, you're everywhere these days, but you've got a, a system for uh, for making sure that people are covered if they've got a, a technical emergency. Uh, and if they want to work with you, uh, tell them a little bit about what you do and where they go. They go over to George the dot tech, and that's uh, our, our home on the web. It's kind of a messy website. We're working on it. We are in the process of literally at this moment designing an entirely new interface for the site to make it easier to book services and find what you need. But the key thing on there is really consulting and support. That is where most of you need to start. Just get a 30 minute session with me. We're going to cover huge amounts of ground in 30 minutes and get you off on the right foot, no matter what your needs are. But if you have more specific needs than that, you know, from just a sound check to designing a studio, your dream studio, or should I build a studio or should I buy an ISO booth prefabric? You know, we have those conversations every week and that's all part of the deal over at George, the dot tech. And well, Dan does a lot of that stuff too. And he does it over at home voiceover studio.com. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, I'm a full-time voice actor. Uh, you know, my approach is from the perspective of being a voice actor, Mm -hmm. the engineering, I try to keep simple because you really don't want to be an audio engineer. There are a lot of people out there that are, oh, we'll call them audio geeks. And they're like, oh man, I got this thing and I got this mic and I got this, which has nothing to do with voiceover. Uh, you know, one is one mic better than another. Some mics might be more sensitive. There's all those sorts of things. But what I do is I teach the basics. If you really don't understand it, if you're like flailing in the dark or in, are intimidated by it, you can talk to me and uh, I will talk you through it to where as when I'm done with you after an hour, hour and a half, you're going to go, oh, well, that was easy. Um, now I understand it. And now I'm not intimidated by it. And that's, you know, that makes me very happy as, as a teacher to get people to understand that. Plus, if you want to have your audio analyzed, you got your setup, you got your mic, you have your, uh, your interface, you have your booth, your closet, you know, your backyard, wherever it is you're recording, uh, and you can send that to me uh, on the, uh, <laughs> the Specimen Collection Company, uh, which you'll find currently at the bottom of my homepage. Within a couple of weeks, it will be at the top of my homepage. And for $25, I will give you a very thorough analysis of what your audio sounds like, what you probably need to do to get it sounding better, and what sounds right. Amazing how, t- how many times the acoustics are right, but the levels are all off, and you know there's a lot of background noise and things like that. And you know I will teach you how to address those, mostly from a physical point of view, as opposed to let's add this technology to it to try and clean that up, uh, which we generally don't recommend. Uh, always best to get it right up front, which saves you a lot of time on the back end. So uh, check those things out. I'll be happy to hear from you. Anyway, we got time for all sorts of stuff. We're going to get to your questions in just a little bit. But George has all this stuff that he has been compiling all week because he's had nothing better to do uh, (laughs) except find stuff on the Internet. What do you got this week? Well, uh, by now, uh, whether you want to or not, you know there is a new Mac. (laughs) 
<laughs> and just a little bigger than the, the mini. A lot of a lot of you are Windows users. We know that, and we know we we have a lot of discussions on the pros and cons of one over the other. And there's never been more reasons to not use Windows for audio production because, ah, oh man, why is there glitches and clicks and pops? Why does my audio never go above minus six dB? I can't make it louder. On and on, all these things that plague Windows systems because they just weren't designed for audio production. The drivers are convoluted. There's multiple versions. There's inconsistencies from one thing to the next. There's updates that come every Tuesday morning without your, without being able to stop them. Uh, there's just so many things uh, that are just moving targets. Well, I mean, as if the the Mac M1 systems that Dan and I are now using, and a lot of you guys are now. Uh, if those weren't powerful enough and amazing enough, well, they said, hold my beer over at Apple and they <laughs> came out with, or hold my apple, <laughs> hold my <laughs> apple. They came out with this thing. It is a big, fat, chunky Mac mini <laughs> as, 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 uh, as, uh, Leo Laporte calls it the fat, the fat boy. It's, it's basically, little boy, yeah. it's, it's so clearly just, it's a Mac mini that's been stretched vertically. And the reason they stretched it vertically was really mainly not to jam more, you know, chips in there. It was for cooling because the, really the top half of this case is huge cooling fans that run counter clock. Uh, like it's like two blades of a uh, drone. They spin opposite directions to reduce, reduce turbulence and it, watch the keynote. If you haven't already, it's very impressive. Just skip ahead, skip past the iPhone SE and, all that boring stuff. Go right to the this thing. It's about thirty five minutes in, and see the what's inside. It's really impressive. They they, but you know, <laughs> they do things that Windows people just nod their head like, oh, you know, you finally put a, an SD card on the front. Yeah, we've had that for years on our Windows computers. We've had ports and well, okay, it's back to the Mac Mini. They have it finally, an SD card on the front, two USB C ports on the front. Um, but glad to know that. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it behind there and get it in there. Yeah, it's, oh, here we go. I was wondering oh, how we spin it around. There wow. we go. Um, on the back, there's a couple more ports from the Mac minis that we currently are using, Dan. And, and I, and some of you, it has two additional USB four or Thunderbolt four, uh, ports. Um, so, uh, it's got a couple more ports and lovely that they didn't take away the HDMI port. I thought for sure port was going to be gone but no it's still there and it's still the main way to plug in your screen um it's and it still has a power supply inside so on top of everything else it doesn't require an external power lump like the old og mac mini do you remember those they had a big power supply oh, yeah 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 no it's built in it has that weird mickey mouse looking plug that's becoming more and more uh common thankfully um it has a proper headphone jack, and I know most of you don't need it because you've got an audio interface, but the headphone jack on it is, and they literally said this during the, during the keynote, can drive high impedance headphones. The fact yeah, that they yeah. actually said that <laughs> was yeah. pretty impressive. So yeah. it's got a lot going for it. Now, the main thing that is really making it sell is, is, is the horsepower. <laughs> and the analogy I have for it is like, anybody that likes Tesla, knows how the original Tesla Model S was quick, right? That was the M1. This is this is now the ludicrous mode and the plaid mode max because it is redonkulously fast, extremely powerful. Um, they launched a brand new chip in this one called the M1 Ultra where they tie two M1 Pro chips together or max chips and make this double, st I mean, it's, it is outrageously powerful. So who is this computer for? It is for video producers. It is for power hungry applications that do tons of video. Um, maybe if you're like a music producer and you use a ton of plugins and native instruments and samples, and that's who this is for. For everybody else, it's bragging rights, purely. <laughs> I got one of these. It is purely bragging rights. I'm telling you, this thing has more power than anybody uh, in voiceover could ever need. It starts at two grand. That's a reasonable price for a super powerful computer. 
at half the price, the M1 Mini is perfectly suited Works for fine. what we're doing. You're it watching is amazing. Us You're watching this whole thing over. We're now. using it. So yeah. anyway, that's the new Mac Studio. The display looks really impressive too. The and studio it's really display expensive. again. <laughs> it's, it's the cost of a decent computer. Just the display. So I'm not running out and buying it. I'm just not. But you know, again, bragging rights. It's got a 12 megapixel camera. It has this mode called on stage. So like if you want to move around, it it digitally recrops and follows you on frame. And it's just it does some slick stuff, but it's it's kind of over the kill overkill. Anyway, in that's contrast the, to that. <laughs> in contrast to that, yeah. <laughs> Windows. Windows, um, well, you know, I don't, I don't need to rub it in. I don't rub, need to rub salt in the wound. But if I, I've definitely been converting Windows users to Mac more lately than ever. And I think at this point, if you're still on Windows, you, it's because you're a hobbyist that loves PC. You love customization. You love troubleshooting. You love trying to figure out how to get the most performance. You're, you're a hot rodder, right? Windows, I think Windows users are hot rodders. They're not going to go buy a Tesla Model S Plaid. They're going to buy a 58, you know, Chevy Bel Air and hot rod it. That's to me what a Windows computer is. Now you can buy one pre-hot rodded. You can, and you can do this in, in, in with cars. You can go to a hot rod shop and walk out of there with a $150,000, you know, 67 Camaro. And that's how I feel like Windows are. Like it's, once they're super hot rodded, dialed in and optimized, and there's, I found a 30 minute video on just optimizing windows for audio. You do all that right. And it will probably work pretty well for you until the next update comes that you don't know is coming. Um, but that's, that's the thing about windows and people are like, well, I bought a gaming computer and it's supposed to be this and that it's the, it's I nine six cord. I'm like, it doesn't matter if, if, if everything doesn't work together, like a well-oiled machine, you're going to have problems. I, what I said recently online was like windows is cheaper, but there's a hidden cost of saving money and going with windows for a voiceover studio. There just is. And that's, that's all that other stuff that you have to deal with the overhead. Anyway, moving on. I don't think it's ever going to get better, but if it does, I'll let you guys know. I, as soon as somebody says windows, Microsoft changed something that makes sound drivers now work the way they're supposed to. It's just easy. Like, okay, I'll, I'll when be there. Pigs fly. I'll be there. <laughs> it might be windows 12 or whatever it is. I don't know, 30. but it ain't windows 11. Um, <laughs> in the, in the plugin side of things, um, our friend, friend Jim Edgar is a great voiceover technologist of, of his own right. Um, he did a little quick video about a new waves plugin called clarity VX. And I think it's biggest selling point because, you know, they want to take some thunder away from isotope in this area is it's a voice denoiser at a very low price. So with isotope, if you want their, all their suite of plugins, you got to buy a suite of plugins. You got to buy a whole package with this. You can buy just this one plugin called clarity VX, the basic model. And it's right now it's only $29. So it's a very affordable noise reduction plugin. I will say this though, if you've never had a waves plugin before, there's a learning curve of just getting it installed. Like there's, you have to install a plugin manager. Now Isotope has the same. They have, they have a plugin manager too. You have to install that first and you have to get the licensing going. There's a bunch of steps to get it up onto your system, but it is a, a very simple interface in terms of noise reduction. It literally is just a single knob that you turn and that is kind of nice the simplicity factor um jim found it to be very comparable he thought it sounded better for certain things i saw some discussions some people thought the isotope rx voice denoise actually was better in some ways they're just different and uh if you're gonna really if you're really curious give it a try get a demo and see if it's worth it to you um i still like bertom denoiser um, not Bertram, but Bertom, <laughs> B-E-R-T-O-M. That's still my favorite noise reduction tool. It's not quite as simple one knob operation. It does have six sliders that you, you have to monkey around with a little bit, but I think it sounds amazing and it's free. I mean, you can pay for it for, believe me, you should, but you can install it for free. There's no license manager thing. There's just, you can just uh, download it, install it and use it very quickly. And I, I love that about Bertram Denoiser. It, it sounds great. 
what they call shareware. Yeah, it is kind of like shareware. I also call it honorware, like Reaper. You know, <laughs> you everybody knows that Reaper. There's probably a lot of you out there. Don't you won't admit it, but you probably launch Reaper and then wait for it to count down five seconds, and then and then you start using it. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's kind of like that. It is. It's like a shareware. Yeah. Um, moving on. So Revelator, Personas Revelator. Another week I was, of Revelator. <laughs> I was so excited because they finally released an update that was going to fix my problem with my pan slightly to the left thing. That was weird. I installed it. I was all excited. Then today we're getting ready for the show. And I'm like, hey, can you guys hear that when I play that back? Can you hear it when I, when I play the VOBS uh, Tech Talk voiceover intro? Everybody's like, nope. <laughs> and I look over at the cons console and I realize a whole section of the control unit, the software control, uh, this, and I have it running on my iPad here. Wow, the color is bizarre. It's, it's all purple. Uh, it's not what it looks like. This camera is, is crabby. Um, a whole section of the control panel is gone. There used to be a button right here that said stream, and it's gone. And there used to be three mix or four mixes here main um mix a mix b mix c and now there's only three mixes not four i have no idea why that disappeared i have no idea what happened to my stream setting but the bottom line is it sort of crippled the revelator it doesn't do everything it's supposed to do it doesn't do what it was always that i always what i loved about it I, personas what's going on you guys <laughs> it's you're killing me it's a glitch maybe you just got to re-download it again I'm running it on, I'm running it on my iPad. I'm running it on my desktop system. I'm, you know, I followed the instructions from the support ticket I had opened because of the complaint and they're like, install this. I don't know guys. So it's not all still happy, happy, happy in revelator land. So, um, I'm not going to be giving it a, a glaringly happy review. I, I love what it's been doing for me. But at the end of the day, if you have to do what we do here, on, which is do live shows and stream and have multiple sources of audio, the Roadcaster, which Dan's got in his studio, is still kicking butt. So sure do. Yeah. Um, the Rode NTG5 is back. That's the microphone I'm using tonight, which I'll switch cameras so you can see my microphone. It's back. This is the Rode NTG5. It's been replaced under warranty. I had some, the, the dreaded sort of clipping issue and it's gone now because they sent me a new one. I know it's new because I sent them one in just an envelope padded and wrapped in bubble wrap and they sent me back a retail box. So I have doubles of everything. <laughs> the shotgun, <laughs> uh, the, the big pistol grip, all the accessories. I have doubles of everything, which is nice. Thanks, Road. It's nice to have spares. Anyway, but the NTG5 is back. I really hope whatever the bad batch of capacitors or whatever the component was that was failing um, in a lot of people's mics, hopefully that's been resolved now. Yeah. And have um, needed a new tube. <laughs> yeah, there's no tube in this tube. Uh, but yeah, whatever it was, uh, I hope it never comes back. But I'm back on my NTG5. It's a great sounding mic. The NTG4 Plus was working just fine in its stead. But there's just this just has a little extra something something that I that I really like. Sounds great. Last thing before I wrap up my tech update, and this is off topic topic from pure audio tech. But okay. if you want to kind of like come off with a little bit more of a professional front end in terms of your business and accept more of maybe phone calls um to to for as a way for people to reach you and interface with you, that if you may not want to have two cell phones first of all right so maybe you've used google voice to have a separate business line and separate business from pleasure but google voice has a lot of limitations too um and so i've recently started using open phone and it's a virtual business phone and so you, you can create you can port your existing number into it which is what i did or just make a new number and it gives you a lot of customization including actually a phone menu so now, if you call uh, my business phone number, 424-226-8528, it will ring this new system and you can press one to be patched into my phone. You can press two to go off to customer service and it rings my assistant's phone. You can, you know, I have a phone tree or what do you call it? An IVR, whatever they call that. 
Um, and it's not expensive. A and virtual really, centric system. Yeah, it's not expensive. It's very uh, easy to set up, and it works really, really well. So uh, you can have auto responders for a text message, letting people know, "Hey, I'm here, but right now I'm in the booth, so I can't get back to you. Just give me a minute." You know, it's it's a really great service. So I'm very happy with it so far. If anybody's looking at something a little bit beyond the same phone number for everything, or even Google Voice. It, it rings, and only two or three people call me. So what, what do I? Care? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, 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 and actually, if you call that number and you press nine, that dispatches to the nine one one tech support dispatcher, and that's what can get you to. You might even talk to Dan Leonard because he's one of the on call texts that might get your phone call. So um, right. it's great to have a flexible ways to be reached and come off as a pro instead of you know maybe just. A guy with a phone. If, if that's into, if that's something you're into. <laughs> well, you know, if you're a voice actor and you answer the phone, it's like, "Hello." Like, oh, you have a great voice. You basically, yeah, you basically get the gig the second you answer the phone <laughs> when you have a great voice actor voice. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Dan, let's talk about compressor limiters and what the heck they're for. And well, yeah. When should you use them, or when you shouldn't? Well, uh, I I got a call from our our good friend Debbie Derryberry this week one of the top people in animation. And she mm -hmm. was saying that, you know, she had been recommending a, you know, a, a certain interface that we're no longer recommending. And I, I wrote to her and I said, Hey, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, don't tell people to get that one, you know, get, get a focus, right. Two I two or a solo or something. She goes, well, sometimes when people are using that in animation, they, they have to ride the game with that. And, you know, and, and because they have to talk loud, they have to talk soft, you know, and by riding the game, I mean, you know, ha literally having your hand on the gain dial and turning it down when you're talking loud and turning it back up when you're more conversational. So there is a device. Uh, sometimes it's analog. Sometimes it's, you know, in digital programming called a limiter. And and sometimes and I and I'm like, well, you know, you could use, you know, a limiter on, on, on a, an interface. Um, you know, there's. The, there's one that has a, a compressor on it, which sort of does the same thing. So what's really the difference between a compressor and a limiter? Uh, basically, and then George and I will demonstrate for you. A, a limiter is something that you set a threshold that the volume of your voice will not go above. So you don't overmodulate. And when you overmodulate, the audio will break up and somebody gets an overmodulated file on the other side, they're going to go, this is overmodulated. You can't fix overmodulation. If it, you do it, it's dead. You know, the, there are some programs, oh, we can fix that and make it usable. No. Declipping or declicking. Declipping. Declipping. De yeah, declipping, yeah. right. And, you know, you, you don't want to go there. And you don't want an engineer. Oh, crap. Now I got to do the declipper on this. Yeah. You want to get it impression. right up front. So one way to do it, and for somebody who perhaps who's doing animation or gaming where you, you have to go through loud voices and soft voices, you know, I used to say, look, do the loud stuff first, do the soft stuff second, or vice versa, so you don't burn out your voice for the soft stuff. Um, you know, or use proper mic technique. We had uh, David Kay on last week, and he was demonstrating for us, just in talking to us, how you, you know, if you're going to yell at somebody, you don't do it right on mic because you don't yell in somebody's ear. But if you're, you know, talking conversationally, you know, like this, the way you normally would over a cup of coffee, you know, you have to turn the gain up to get the proper level. But if you have to shift between them constantly, a limiter will, if set at, and where, where's a good place to set a limiter? I, if I use one, it's probably like minus three or minus two, something like that. So it doesn't go up near zero and it doesn't clip no matter what. It automatically reduces your volume. So it, mm -hmm. it's the, it doesn't, it doesn't clip. Now, how is that different from a compressor? Because, you know, a lot of people say you got to put compression on there. What does a compressor do? A compressor makes the loud stuff softer and the soft stuff louder. So everything is even, which is why it's called a compressor. Uh, and George, what are we going to use to demonstrate exactly what that means? I was going to show a compressor here. I have loaded on Twisted Wave. Let me see if I can share this. Uh, what's weird is when I click away from Twisted Wave, the compressor window hides itself. 
Ah, yeah, because you have to actually highlight that when you when you share. Oh, that's the trick, huh? Yeah, I got to click on the word on the the plugin. Go to share. Yeah, when I click share, it just disappears again. Mm. Dang it! All right, I'll just share the whole screen. There you go. And then I don't know if we can crop in and show it or not, but here we go. That works. Okay, now you can see it. Yeah. So here's a compressor. Um, this one's from a company called uh, Melda Productions, which I uh, was shown this suite of plugins recently, and they're very affordable slash free, more sort of freeware, which is nice. Um, so a compressor has more controls than a, a limiter. A limiter typically just has a threshold and maybe an output setting. So the threshold, the lower you set it, the more the compressor, before the, before the more the limiter kicks in, the ceiling is how loud it's allowed to go. That's sort of like the normalizer, right? Right. You can't go above minus three, minus two. But a compressor has a lot more controls. Um, you've got one of the main ones that's very different is a ratio control. So a ratio control controls how much the level is going to go down or is it, it's going to get reduced, right, once it passes the threshold. With a limiter, that ratio is very, very high. So when the level crosses that point, the threshold point, it just is stopped like a brick wall. Sometimes well, we call it. Call, they call it a brick wall limiter. A brick yeah. wall limiter, right. But with a compressor, you, got the, you have the control over how much the audio is gonna be reduced by. So a compressor can be a lot more subtle and, uh, and as a result, a little bit more transparent. Um, but you use them differently, and I tend to use a compressor before the limiter. I tend to use the limiter as the very last output setting. Maybe it's like the last line of defense, if you want to call it that. But um, so that that's the main difference. The the, the tool set looks uh, a lot simpler when you're using a limiter. There, there's let me load a limiter in here. Uh, let's see what we have. Perhaps the basic AU one. or Yeah, the AU one is so, so simple. It doesn't even have any meters. Here's, a, here's the audio unit peak limiter. This comes on every Mac. And it's got an attack and release time, which I usually set where they're at because they're fine. And really, you have one knob that you worry about, and that's the pregame. So if you don't want to change or increase the gain in any way, you just leave that at zero. And so now you have a limiter. It will prevent levels from going above zero and you're done. Right. But if you want to add more level beyond that, so you want to you want to build up or make up loss of level because of your other processing, then you can add more gain called pregame and it will increase the level of everything all at once. Right. Which takes a little bit of experience to know how much to increase it or reduce it based yeah. on, on any particular file. So you have to, you have to base it on what exactly you're doing because yeah, every, too much of that. It. And you'll end up with something that looks like that. Ah. And, uh, <laughs> we don't while want it's that. not technically <laughs> clipping, that's going to come across as like really overbearing and sometimes almost distorted sounding to the listener. Yeah. So, you got to be careful with how much limiter you put on stuff and make it, uh, if it, it needs to sound good at the end of the day. <laughs> right. And the, and these are, and these are all plugins for post, you know, mm -hmm. doing it up front is a little bit different, which we can talk about. There's oh yeah. Many. Well, let's talk about that too. Cause that was kind of the impetus for this, right? Is right. Some, yeah. some, a few select interfaces out there have that function on the input side. Right. Yeah. We, you know, we know the, the Micport Pro 2 has it. Mm -hmm. which is something that, that, you know, that I know Debbie is testing because she wants to go on vacation and like, I need a limiter because I don't want to have to ride the gain. So, you know, we share that one. I know there's a compressor on the, uh, the Yamaha Rubik's. series. Uh, well, the, the Yamaha, uh, AG03 and the AG06 has a, a, uh, yeah. a DSP limiter or a, D, a DSP, uh, uh, compressor on there. Right. So I suggested a couple of those. And then there's the, the Roland Rubik's 24 that we, we were looking at. That is built in so you can do it from in the, the hardware. front end. Right. Yeah. And having it in the hardware can be nice because of a reliability factor. Like I was right. saying earlier, the Revelator, it has that too, but it's software driven or firmware driven. And if the firmware <laughs> update doesn't work the right way, <laughs> well, you get you what you got today. You're hosed. <laughs> and if you have something that's hardware based, like the, like I reviewed this a couple of weeks ago, the mm. Portcaster, 
It's all in here. All the controls are in here. All the routing is in here. Even the limiter is a little switch on the front that you can turn on. So, yeah. yeah. Tim Friedlander has mentioned here, thanks for watching, Tim, that, that the Scarlett 2i2 is being blacklisted by some New York City studios. Yeah, I talked to him about this last week, and um, and he mentioned he's like I he's like I recommend a lot of the same stuff you do, but I've stopped recommending the Scarlet Two I Two uh, because um, uh, he's had some instability issues with some of the Scarlets, but mainly because there's literally studios and I and I don't have names here, guys can't call anybody out here, but apparently there's a few studios that are like, oh, you have a Scarlet Two I Two, not next. And that doesn't uh, mean you have to buy an Apollo. No. It just means they, they have a a prejudice, if you want to call it that, against the 2i2. Right. Now, you here's the thing. Get yeah. something just as cheap as a 2i2. It just can't be that. I mean, tell them you have an Apollo, for crying out loud. If they're hearing you on the other end, they don't know. I mean, it's like, you know, tell me, oh, sure, I'm using this and that. And they're like, they don't know. It's I think it's, you know, what they hear, what they read, and all that. Anyway, we got lots of questions to attend to here. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with your questions and the answers to those questions right after this on VoiceOver Body Shop. So don't go away. We'll be right back. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. V-O-B-S dot TV. VoiceOverEssentials.com has the ultimate answer for mic safety. Look, your mic is the most valuable part of your audio chain, so protect it from boom stand disaster. It's the ABS, the Adjustable Boom Stop. It's simple, ingenious, and infinitely adjustable. The padded non-slip pouch fits almost any size boom arm. It has a unique double-loop webbing system for an unlimited angle of the downstrap. It works with tripod and solid round bases. A strong articulated strap keeps your boom where you want it without weights, sandbags, or knuckle-busting tightening of the boom clutch. The light gray webbing lets you mark and repeat stand settings for just the right spot for you or anyone else who uses your microphone, saving time and guesswork. This is the simple solution that simply works. You'll kick yourself for not having thought of it. Lock it in place with our ABS, the adjustable boom stop. Get it now at voiceoveressentials.com. During the break, I thought I was going to be clever and switch audio interfaces, but no, that didn't work out that way. I couldn't get uh, Chrome to redetect my my backup interface. So if I if you're hearing clicks and pops from me, I apologize. It's the Revelator Personas gods mad at me for bad mouthing their product earlier in the show. Apparently, anyway, I'm taking thunder away from our beautiful, wonderful, lovely sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and Source Connect is a tool for professionals from the bit, from the top to the bottom of the production, from the producer engineer side to the actor side. It allows the actor to interface directly into the session as though they're right there standing in the studio and bring that audio straight into the timeline of Pro Tools. That's really what most of the studios are recording you on because that's the tools they like. And going right into their timeline so that that means on the fly they can punch you in they can replace something they can edit you they can listen to you back with whatever else is in the production they can throw together a an approval mix for the commercial clients who are often listening in on the session and they can do that all on the fly because they are all your audio is being fed right into their system so this is why it is preferred by so many um engineers you know, there's a lot of tools out there. Some of them are cheaper. Some of them are even free. Um, but this one is just, it's just so well established and it's so heavily relied upon by the top jobs out there. So maybe you should probably have it in your arsenal. Um, if you want to get a 15 day free trial, head over to source-elements.com. And if you want to learn more about what it does and how it works, head over to georgethe.tech slash SC. Uh, my page on Source Connect. You can watch a video on how it works and get support if you need it. Um, anyway, thanks so much for the support, Source Elements. Let's get on to the tech questions right after this. 
Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Well, you know what they say about storage? The more storage you build, the more stuff you shove in it. Well, we have more time today. We still shoved more stuff in. Anyway. <laughs> So we're running a, a little behind, but we got lots of questions, and we want to get to your questions. How so am I sounding want, now, guys? You sound fabulous. There was no a more clicks, clicks and, and pops. pops. In there. No, no, no. Well, when it turned on, yeah. Anyway. Well, now I'm on the uh, podcaster instead of the revelator. Ah, okay. So hopefully the clicks and pops are a thing of the past. We'll yeah. find out. Yeah, turn your gain up just a little bit. All righty. Uh, hungry for the devil girl from Mars to be my Venus YouTube. George is using a Rode NTG5 there. Yes, you are. It's fixed. Um, okay. Play the voice, real kids, VO family. That's quite a name. We picked up a 20-year-old 416 Dan, last week. Dan, I think week. people have learned that if they change their, their YouTube name, we get to slip in a plug for their YouTube channel. Oh, real kids, VO family on YouTube. Anyway, she says, I picked up a 20-year-old 416 last week from a TV producer. How long do they last if well cared for? Well, there's always that joke about you can hammer nails with those things. Well, yeah, they'll, they'll last longer than, than longer than you would imagine. I mean, well, for what you're paying for it, you're darn well better. Yeah, yeah no, they're German they mics were, are made to last. Yeah, and those were designed to be road warriors because they are video mics for road crews that yeah. go out and shoot stuff. So it's probably just fine. The only way to find out is to record something on it, let us listen, and go. Ah, eh, sounds fine. Yeah, I would be more worried about buying one on a major discount that's new in the box. Those are the ones to avoid because, believe it or not, there actually are um, counterfeit Sennheiser 416s. Mm. So I would be better off. I would feel a lot better buying a $500 one that's 20 years old than a $500 one that's brand new. So Absolutely. just keep that in mind. Yeah. Now, Jeff Holman has a great question here because we were just talking about this. He says, uh, Dan, do you ride the game when you do video game auditions that have some normal volume lines and some yelling lines? We were just talking about this. Or mm -hmm. do you back away from your mic and use mic technique? When I do video game auditions, I sound so quiet because they ask for me and them to be at a minus 18 level and only the yelling lines sound good. That's because he's using one level for all the different stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, now I'm hearing an echo from your headphones. Um, yeah, no, I use mic technique. Uh, but I also know that if I'm going to be doing things that are louder and softer, you know, I might do the loud stuff first and then the soft stuff second or vice, vice versa, especially with video game auditions. But if I'm going to yell, you know, like, I will kill you. I mean, come on, you just back off the mic. You don't yell in somebody's ear uh, and they're still going to hear you. These mics will pick up anything if you're, you know, at the right, uh, the right time. But we were just talking about limiters and some people like to use a limiter uh, because they want to be consistent from the mic. Even though our voices come to people from different directions and different distances. And I think it's important that, uh, you know, you practice that, you know, using different mic technique, but work with what works best for mm -hmm. you. And that's usually the best answer to that. Question. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the engineers are telling actors, you know, when they say, uh, and I'm not even sure what they mean by be at minus 18 level. I uh, th th Does that mean it would be loudest? nice if they explain that to you. Is that yeah? Does that mean the loudest you're allowed to go is minus eighteen? Um, because yeah. that is really low. 
Yeah, I, I think what it is they want is minus 18 so that, the, you know, so you don't overmodulate when you're loud and turn the game down. You know, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, even though apparently they've been blacklisted, uh, you know, on the 2i2 or on the solo, you, if you look at the game dial here, I have a line that says, you know, yelling and one that says conversational. I just know where they are. Yeah, you I don't need like 17 different incremental settings. Right. You really only need one for extreme high level and one for most everything else. And, exactly. and you're going to be fine. So, yeah, I mean, riding gain during a session is not easy. So splitting it into two different passes, loud stuff and everything else, it seems like a very reasonable way to get around that problem. Right. And you've got to find the sweet spot for you, for your yelling and for your conversational stuff. Uh, question from Matt Davis. George. Uh, what do you guys think of the AT2020? It depends. <laughs> I've Are heard them talking? sound okay, and I've heard them be a little bit noisy. I've heard them sound a little bit sibilant and crispy. I've, you know, I've. it's not blanket no good by any means. Right. I've, I've, it's certainly gotten some good recordings from people over the years, and I, I still know a few people that use it. That's their day-to-day -day daily driver mic. Right. I think the 2035 for a little bit more money is a much better mic. They've upgraded essentially everything about that mic. Um, for only $50 more, it is by far a better value. Yeah. Um, so high pass filter filters built filters. in, it has a yeah. shock mount, it's, it's a bigger capsule, yeah. it's quieter. Just about everything you can think of is better at only 50% more price. I think right. it's the way to go. Yeah, and those AT mics are... Those are heavy duty too. They build them, you know, like, yeah. This 3035, which isn't even made anymore. It's been hanging around my studio since I was a live recording engineer and it still <laughs> works without a, no problem. Yeah. My know? first voiceover mic too. Uh, Terry Briscoe asks, okay, guys, I've been asking you both about USB mics for a while now. And I wanted to let you know, I have finally switched over to XLR as of yesterday. Now I do have a question. I'm in the middle of an audiobook. Should I keep using the mic I started with or go with the new equipment? Congrats on the 11th year anniversary, by the way. That's a real simple answer. Keep the same mic. You cannot change anything on the second half of a book, and certainly not in the middle of a chapter. Uh, they're going to sound a little different. They may both sound good, but they're going to sound different, and it's going to be noticeable to the listener. What do you think? Yeah, definitely never change anything about your studio mid audiobook. <laughs> Unless you like to make the engineer that's doing your mastering hate you, or you're going to hate yourself trying to make sure everything matches. Don't do it. I yeah. mean, if if it was if the mic was good enough to start the book, it's good enough to finish the book. Yeah, they hired you. So, <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, USB mics aren't categorically bad. They don't categorically sound bad. Um, they're just, you know, don't they have they have limitations that we've talked about many times. So right, yeah. don't worry about it. You're excited to use that new mic. We get it, but be patient. Use it on something else, not on that currently in production book. Yeah. You get the next question from BC. BC, loving the show. Thanks. Um, each time I want to record, I assemble my booth with various partial walls of acoustic foam and bass traps. So he's got a build on demand booth. <laughs> mm, all right. Not quite on demand, build on demand. Um, any way to get a consistent sound or is this mission impossible? Um, it's, it's not mission impossible, but why would you want to have a nearly impossible mission every time you record voiceover? That sounds difficult. I, I get it if you're using a multi-use space and or you're dealing with family or Maybe you're building it in the closet of your walk-in closet and, you know, you can't be in the way. There's a lot of reasons why someone might want to do a temp, a temp booth like that, but it is really difficult to get it right every time. It can be done, though. As long as you put everything in the same place, put the mic in the same spot, stay in the same distance, and you do that time and time again, uh, you can certainly get consistent sound. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, be but you, having something that you got to keep putting up and taking down and putting up, you really want to try and create as much of a permanent space that is consistent so you don't have to go through that. 
Oh man, consistency is so important. Like if Absolutely. you're really taking this seriously as a business, that's one of the things that will get you more bookings is if every time you send them audio, they can count on it being the same and consistent. That's what's going to bring them back over and over. Wow, this guy's great. Everything is always the same level and it sounds the same and we can drop it in something that's two years old. It's going to sound the same now that they, they, they love that. You know, that is really what that's gold when you can get that, uh, achieve that. I see there's a second part about noise coming in through exterior windows. Yes, How do you yeah. stop the noise? Yeah. Dan, do you have a magic solution that doesn't cost a ton of money? It stops. Well, I mean, somebody once noise? asked, yeah, somebody once asked, I, you know, I got a flock of birds that keeps coming by here. How do I, you know, how do I keep that from making noise? I said, you got a shotgun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, there'll be a loud DC, noise and then no bird noise at all. Is it Reagan or DC Dulles? One of those airports <laughs> does that. They have these air, they have these cannons at the end of the runway to scare the birds away. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you know, there's window plugs, there's all sorts of different things. I know, George, you were, you were looking at something that, you know, that seals the window and stuff like that. Uh, oh, Indo windows. If you have the money and the patience to get them, yeah. Indo windows.com. Those are, those are pretty awesome. If you don't want to damage your windows, if you're renting, they're a, a really nice, a really nice option, but yeah, they they'll take weeks, maybe months to yeah. to get one of those because they're I guess they're just under s such massive demand. Yeah. Now this next question from Terry Truitt, um, who's also on YouTube, uh, and and I have some distinct thoughts on this. He goes, "What's your thought on the Waves C1 gate? You know, now what's a gate? A gate? Now we were talking about compressors and limiters and stuff like that. A gate essentially when you're, if you've got background noise, when it reaches a certain level below a certain level or above a certain a threshold, level, a threshold, right. it will reduce the volume by a certain ratio. The thing is, is if you're going to use a gate and I know people that are using them, they have to be set right. And you can't have a loud noise floor and then try to hope have a gate, you know, hide save the noise. You. Exactly. Yeah. Because if you've got a loud background noise, even if it's really fast, if you got fast attack on it, it's still going to go, you know, I'm like, and you will hear that you've Between got background phrases, noise. Yeah, you'll exactly. hear it. Yeah. You'll hear it come up. And when you start talking, the gate opens and if that noise is loud enough. It's going to be quite audible behind your right. voice. So yeah. it's not, not a fix all. I've never used the wave stuff. I, the waves plugins extensively. Um, I, I, I don't like all these third-party plugins that require licenses and have these in, invasive. I just, I'm not into that stuff, but wave stuff is renowned. I mean, obviously engineers use this stuff constantly. I just don't have, I have no experience. I won't, I won't say I know anything about it. I, I've never used the C1 um, gate. So as long as it's got a ratio, it's probably okay. If it doesn't have a ratio control or a range control, don't use it because it's yeah. probably just cutting out your room tone and that's really bad. Yeah. You know, the, the, to me, physical, try and isolate yourself better. Do not rely on technology to fix these things for you. Uh, that's why you find a closet with a lot of noise in it or a booth. Uh, because if you try to do it with technology, you got to know how to use the technology. Having yeah, the, the technology is not going to help you. Yeah. The input gain is also really critical with the gate. Yeah. If you vary your input gain, it screws up the gate and then it doesn't do what it's supposed to do either. So right. they're really touchy uh, for recording. Yeah. Question from Grace Newton, which I actually have the answer to. Uh, what does one typically mount their road arms to? Or, you know, your retriculated arm, you know, this guy. Uh, and she says, uh, you know, mine's currently mounted to the desk where my Mac and interface are. But last Tech Talk, George said that's not advisable because of bumps and stuff like that. You'll notice when I bump my desk, it doesn't do anything to the mic because my mic is bolted to the wall with the special Heil, you know. Yeah, the wall mount bracket. I have a wall mount. Yeah, it's connected to the wall, so it's not connected to my desk. And you, know, and you can get those depending on what, you know, what arm you have, and you can get those, those adapters, right? Yeah, if you can't find the Heil for a while, it seemed to be out of stock. There is some company on Amazon selling a wall mount bracket for your typical road, Heil, and many other brand um, mic arms. So, yeah, get it off the desk. Mine is on my desk on a hutch. 
I think because I have a high pass filter on my interface, you're not getting too much. I'm also using this fancy uh, isolator shock mount thing on my mic that's helping a little bit, but um, it's definitely not advisable. Getting it off your desk and on the wall, or and if there's no wall nearby, <laughs> a stand that stands separately from the desk is probably your your best bet. All right. Two quick questions. One from Patricia Andre. This seems to be a topic tonight. It says, what's the best way to set the twisted wave for voiceover so we can edit the loud portions after with twisted wave? I use Apollo Solo, and sometimes I'm a newbie. I don't know what to do after I normalize with minus 3 dB, etc. But then some loud portions are still loud. Uh, it's the same thing. It, nobody, she's not writing the gain. It's, you know, and the soft stuff is soft, and the loud stuff is too loud. And you know, you've either got to adjust it, use a limiter or a compressor. So, or change the way you actually perform those different parts, so right. they're not the loud stuff isn't so loud. Right. right. You can you know, back off the mic. As, yeah, there's such thing as a theater loud versus really being loud, or not theater loud. What's the word for it? There's like a, you know, projection you, and uh, you can sound like you're louder without getting six times louder. That's right. Absolutely. You know, there's techniques there. You can back again, back away from the mic. You can, there's a lot of things you can do, but at the end of the day, human voice and performance is dynamic. So there's going to be very wide ranges and dynamics with certain types of voice work, especially of course, character based stuff. And with that is that's just part of natural, the natural performance dynamic. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about it too much, but if you want a special processing setup that will be transparent to the listener and doesn't distract, we can help you with that. I, that's something I do is make a setup that will control it for you. Um, but you mainly don't need to worry about it because engineers are going to deal with all that dynamic stuff later. Just get it clean without the clipping. Yeah. And then she finishes mouth clicks. What's the holy grail to prevent them? alcohol <laughs> yeah david Work k last right. week he he gave his regimen which is extreme hydration, extreme hydration. he said i i drink three glasses of water and my nose starts to run that's how i know i'm hydrated <laughs> that's what <laughs> he said to try that tomorrow morning <laughs> last question from from tj metzikapo voiceover hey dan and george i'm using a rode nt1 and an audion id4 with mogami gold cables for some reason though the audio is super low and has a lot of interference hiss what can I do to fix this? I'm betting he doesn't have it on as the input. <laughs> that may break there is so much we don't know in this question. That's right. I mean, I can't even begin. Yeah, we don't we know what hear kind it. of computer it is. We don't right. know how it's plugged in. We don't know what OS it is. We don't know. Send us There's a too much we don't know. We'll figure uh, it out. We got to hear it. Yeah. I mean, we'll know for sure if it's not the NT1 that's actually being recorded. Yeah. But that's a telltale sign. If you hit record, start talking. Turn the gain up and down, and the lave the level doesn't change one iota. You're not guaranteed. You're not recording through the ID four. You're probably recording through the built-in mic of the computer. So right, right. or turn with the ID four, you got to turn it up pretty high because the the audience stuff has a a a ratio at the end of the scale that is a little bit more incremental uh, or a little a little more dynamic, gives you more gain at the end. Yeah, there's also a very small chance that the microphone or there's actually an actual equipment failure. Right. You know, that is possible. Um, so we, but we can it. roll that out. Yeah, we want to hear it and then we'll be able to tell you. Well, <sighs> believe it or not, another hour has gone by. 11 years has gone by, but we're still doing it. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. It's been fun. I know it's, it's still fun every, every other Monday. We appreciate it. But we'll be right back to clean things up and sweep things out of here and right after these messages. So don't go away. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. I don't think there's a feeling quite like that moment when something you've auditioned for becomes something you get booked on, especially when it comes to audiobooks. You audition for an audiobook on ACX or in some other form or fashion, and then somebody says, hey, we like what you did. We want you to be our narrator. 
If that isn't a feeling that you've had lately because either you haven't figured out how to do audiobooks or because the efforts that you've put toward audiobooks just don't seem to be working, I've got a solution for you. Let's start with some free videos and then, if you want, registering for the ACX Masterclass. I'm David H. Lawrence the 17th. Along with Dan O'Day, I teach that class. And you can get to those free videos and to registration if you'd like at acxmasterclass.com slash join. That's acxmasterclass.com slash join. I'd love to help you get there. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. All right. To the Rich next Green 11 said, years. Uh, we're princes among men. That's really nice, Rich. Thank you, Thank you buddy. <laughs> what, what, what was that? You said we're princes among men. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. Thank uh, you. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Richard. Um, next week on this very show, we have the lovely and talented Martha Kahn will be joining us and talking about getting your kids into voiceover. Yeah, have them pay the rent for crying out loud. You know, they're running around. Hey, get in here. She teaches kids how to do voiceover. And I think that's a fun thing to do yeah, to help them, you know, pay for their college. Especially if <laughs> Darn <going>. straight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our donors of the week. We got plenty of them, like Philip Sapir. Thomas Pinto. Shelly Avellino. George A. Whittem, my dad. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Greg Thomas. A doctor voice, I believe that's Dr. Nathan Carlson. Antland Productions, Uncle Roy. Yeah, Shanna Pennington Baird. Martha Khan. Martha Khan, yeah. Yay, Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. A Diana and Sandra Manwiller. Uh, hey, again, if you need help with your home voiceover studio, you can go to my place, my website, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com, or mm -hmm. over to George's place over at... George the dot tech. And if you want to see my latest uh, Isotope RX webinar that's been recorded last week, uh, just go to George the dot tech slash webinars where All you right. can find that and review it and learn what the heck that thing does. My dad watched <laughs> it actually. Oh, cool. He's like, I had no clue what I was watching, but now I do. I'm like, cook, that was the point. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Uh, we need to thank, of course, our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and JMC, JMC Demos. Demos. All righty. Well, thanks for joining us this week, guys. You know, a lot. You, I, we love having the live audience. You know, people actually, you know, giving us the questions in real time. And that makes us, uh, you know, it's what George and I do. So, uh, anyway, and then we appreciate the, all that stuff and we appreciate your, pro uh, your participation in our show. And here's Absolutely. to another 11 years, uh, Mr. Hey, I, stranger I, things could happen. <laughs> I know. I, I, I can't, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if my wife is, but I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, all right thanks to jeff holman and uh, for doing the chat room sue merlino yep. for getting it done in the director's chair and lee penny for just lee penny, which he Good continues to be uh that's going to do it for us this week we're here to help you with your audio and the bottom line is if it sounds good it is good i'm dan leonard and i'm george whittem and this is voiceover body shop or vo 
B S Tech Talk 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 Tech Talk, tech talk. We'll see you next week. Martha bye Cunningham. bye. Thanks.